All right. When you're collecting the plant samples, it is extremely important that you collect the right kind of flowers, other inflorescences. Uh, how do you decide which one is the right one? It's very difficult because the native plants differ in their size, shape, maturity, and so many factors. And only with the experience you will find out. But the basic uh, rule is when you pick up a branch, you make sure that in that inflorescence, some flowers are in a very immature stage, some flowers are already mature, and some flowers are just about to open. So you need the flowers which are in a very, very immature stage, and also you need the flowers which are already mature, and also you need the flowers which are just about to open, so that they haven't lost any of their parts. I'll give you some examples of different, different taxa which have where, what to look for. For example, this is one of the native species. This is the inflorescence. And here you can see very immature flower and also the just opened flowers. And uh, we don't see very old flowers. Yes, I can see one old flower here. So this is the, the right kind of material we need to collect, this kind of uh, the flowers. Another kind of uh, plant where you can find the flowers in different maturity. This one is a very old flower. It's of no use for our, our dissection. These are too young. We can't use them in the dissection at all. And uh, the right kind of uh, the flowers are here. So don't collect one which is so old. Don't collect the one which is very, very young. Somewhere in between either this and that, those are the right kind of uh, flowers. So in this case, it, this is an inflorescence containing individual flowers, whereas in this case, it's also a, an inflorescence containing group, groups of flowers. Each ball consists of about 200 flowers. So you are interested in not the entire ball there, one of the flowers within that ball. This itself is an inflorescence, and there are several flowers within that. So you are concentrating on one of the flowers within that ball. This is again a panicle, lots of flowers, and then the concept is exactly the same. Make sure that you have a variety of uh, sort of uh, stages of uh, flower maturity and in grasses and sedges you should look for the opening of the flowers and then the extrusion of the stigma and also the anthers. In this particular inflorescence and it is advanced, it's in an advanced stage, it's of no use collecting something like this because you don't get the just open flowers. They're all advanced, they're all in advanced stage and this is of not much use. So in uh, other types of uh, plants like sedges, again the flowers are very very tiny and yes again you need to look for the ones which shows the protruded stigma and the anthers and uh, then, on, then only they are useful for dissection otherwise they are too mature and you won't be able to identify them. This is a very nice sample because you will get the fruit, you will get the buds, you will get the just opened flowers. So in some of the plants you need to describe the type of the fruit and also the type of the buds and also the, the different parts within the flower. If you can aim for this kind of a structure, I means the, the branch, that is quite ideal for your plant identification. And but the, the RNA is it's very rare, very difficult to get all these three stages in one branch. But that's why you should at least target one of them. Even if you don't get the fruit, at least the, the flower buds should be at different stages of maturity. 
In some native plants, when you go out into the bush, they would have finished flowering, and it, sometimes it's almost very, very difficult to collect the flowers. If that is the case, you will see, still find some remnants of the fruits, and at least you can collect them. And then with the help of the leaves and the, the structure of the fruits and also seeds, if there are any, still you can identify the specimen. But that is not the, the direct method. That's an indirect method. Always use of the flowers is the direct method. And any other method is an indirect. You may get it right or you may not get it right. But this is better than doing nothing. Okay, so just to sum summarize, plant collection requires preparing yourself, preparing for the collection, and selection of this right kind of material. Once you select it, label the specimen, and then press it using the field press between some the butcher paper or maybe the newspapers. So that completes the collection part of the task. And when you collect the plant sample, make sure that you also collect some spare flowers, which you can use them for drawing floral diagrams. Drawing floral diagram is important because without drawing that, you won't be able to find the different parts of the flowers. And if you don't have the different parts of the flowers, you won't be able to identify the specimens using the identification key. So it is critical that you collect some spare flowers and then dissect them. If they're large flowers like this, you don't need a microscope. And you can dissect and also draw the floral diagram. If they're very, very small flowers, then you can put them aside. When you come to the residential school, we will provide the microscopes. You can use the microscope to dissect those ones. The ones you can handle at home, you should be able to do the dissection at home without the using any microscope. Maybe you can use a magnifying lens, and you should be able to I mean, pull out all those parts.